Hey, uh, I just wanted to say that water baptism is a picture of salvation, okay? It's a picture of salvation. It's not salvation. Water baptism is uh, a picture of salvation because, you know, when, when you go under that water, it symbolizes how, you know, you were crucified with Christ, your sins were um, imputed onto his body on the cross, and that he died on the cross and was buried, okay? And when you come up, up out of the water, that's a picture of being raised in newness of life, and how Jesus Christ was, you know, bodily resurrected to prove that he was God, and prove that, yes, indeed, your sins are paid for. Because, look, if it, you're right, if... If he was just crucified and died and then it raised from the dead, nobody would believe on him, you know, after, you know, that, that generation that actually saw him. But the resurrection is proof that he indeed, indeed is who he says he is and did what he said he would do. He indeed is the Messiah, that he is the Christ, that he is the Savior, and Again, water baptism is a picture of salvation. It is not salvation. Getting wet never saved anybody, okay? Um, and, you know, if you think that, you know, water baptism saves you, you're not trusting in Christ to save you. You're trusting in some random sinful man from like the church of Christ or something instead of trusting Jesus Christ to save you. Because you know what? If you're trusting in water baptism, you have to rely on, like I said, some sinful man to dunk you under the water. And that's not trusting Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ was God manifested in the flesh and Jesus Christ is not a sinner. But, you know, your Church of Christ pastor is a sinner, okay? And your Church of Christ pastor needs to be saved because he's trusting in his own works to save him and he's dead in trespasses and sins, all right? Your Pentecostal preacher or whatever is a sinner that needs to be saved because he's trusting in his own works and for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And look, Mark 16, 16 makes it abundantly clear that the people who are damned are the ones that didn't believe. And if you want to say, oh, but the first part says that he that believeth and is baptized and is saved. And yeah, that's true. You're, he that believeth and is baptized is saved because you believed, okay? But he that believeth not is damned. You're damned because you don't believe, Look, if you believe and you're baptized, and you're saved because you believe. If you believe, then you're not baptized like the thief on the cross in Luke 23. You're, you're saved because you believed. Okay? The thief on the cross did not get baptized. Um, I know people want to say he did, but that's a complete lie. They're adding to God's word, and they're found a liar. And another point is that because baptism... You know, water baptism is a picture of salvation. Uh, it only makes sense to be water baptized after you're saved, not before. Okay? Um, when I was a little baby, I I was like, you know, I, I was like water, or, or, you know, excuse me. I was baby baptized. I was like sprinkled in a Catholic church. That doesn't mean anything. Okay? Babies don't understand the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Babies don't believe the gospel, okay? <laughs> um, and look, I, I encourage every believer after they're baptized, I mean, after, after they're saved, excuse me, after they're saved to get water baptized, okay? Because it's a picture of salvation. And, you know, you could all... Not only can you look back on the day you got you got saved, if if you remember the exact date you got saved, you can also look back at your baptism as as a picture of you being saved before, okay. Um, but water baptism doesn't save. 
There, there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Not the man, you know, pastor Pentecostal that, th that thinks you have to be baptized to be saved. <laughs> right? If you have a, if you have somebody, you know, the, the, if you have somebody mediating between you and God that's not, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ, who's the only begotten Son of God, and was God manifested in the flesh, if anybody else but Christ as the mediator, um, it's blasphemous, um, you don't have a mediator, and, you know, your trust, don't trust in a sinful man to get you to heaven. Trust in Jesus Christ to get you to heaven. Okay. And look, I believe the gospel in my car in the side of a highway road. Okay. I believe the gospel and I was in my car and I was saved. But maybe you believe the gospel and you weren't in your car, but you also got saved. Why? Because you believed. Okay. He that believeth and holds a beer bottle is saved. He that believeth and does not hold a beer bottle is saved, okay? He that, you know, believeth and is shacked up with some lady is saved, okay? He that believeth and is not shacked up with a lady is saved, but he that believeth not is damned, okay? And I'm not telling you to go out and do all these sins and, and, and live a you know a wicked life. I'm simply telling you that you already live a wicked life. You need to be saved if you haven't believed the gospel. The gospel's good news. It's glad tidings. It's the best news you'll ever hear because it's already been done. Jesus Christ has already shed his blood for you on the cross. He's already, you know, been buried and rose again on the third day. He's already ascended up into heaven. Um, and he, when he was on the cross, he said it is finished. Okay. He did it. You know, in whom you have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. It's Colossians 1.14. And you have eternal life because he paid for all your sins. All of them, all of them, all of them. Even, you know, the sin of not being baptized, that's paid for, okay? Even the sin of, you know, not reading your Bible, not going to church, not praising God like you should, not loving thy neighbor as thyself, okay? Not loving God of all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Paid for. One sin is enough to send you to hell without Christ. That's why we all need Christ. If all you did in your life was tell one little lie, or like, you know, one little lie, right? But you didn't believe on Christ, you'd still bust hell wide open. And honestly, we all lie more than once, and we've all done worse things than lying. Nobody just lives their whole life telling one little lie. But theoretically, if they if they did, you know, hypothetically, um, but they didn't believe on Christ, and all they did was tell one lie, they'd bust hell wide open when they died. Because that's how holy God is. So don't be ignorant of God's righteousness and go about and establish your own righteousness. Understand that, that God is holy. He, he is the standard. We fall short of his standard. Fall, have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. We missed his mark, okay? Um, and we all need to be saved. Jesus Christ is the Savior of all men, especially them that believe. Um and what that means, you know, some of you that are Calvinists that may be watching, is that Jesus Christ takes to death for every man, okay? He shed his blood for every man because he wanted everybody to be saved. But we also have free will, Calvinists. Look up the word free will in the Bible, and that becomes incredibly apparent that we have free will. Um, the word free will is literally in the Bible 17 times in the King James. And... Um, we have free will to accept or reject Christ. Okay. And I chose to accept him. I chose to believe on him, put my trust in him. And I believe he paid for all my sins. Um, because the Bible says that he did. 
And the Bible says it, I believe it, that settles it. <laughs> so, look, if you're trusting in something plus Jesus to save you, whatever it is, right? If, if, if it's Jesus plus water baptism or Jesus plus your works, Jesus plus repenting of your sins, Jesus plus, um, you know, you quitting smoking, Jesus plus you never dropping an F-bomb again, okay? It means you're not really trusting Jesus because, you know, it, if you were trusting Jesus, you wouldn't have to add all those other things, okay? You know, I'm not I'm not sitting in a chair right now, but you know, if I if I would be sitting in a chair and I'd lift my feet up up off the ground, I'd be trusting the chair completely to not collapse on me. Okay. And you know, that's a little illustration of salvation. But if you were to sit on the chair and put your feet down, um, you know. It'd be a picture of you not trusting the chair completely to uh, to hold you up. You'd be trusting in the chair plus your feet, which means you doubt the chair, okay? So if you're trusting in, in Jesus Christ plus your water baptism, you're not trusting in Christ. You have doubts about Christ. You have doubts that he paid for all your sins, including possibly the sin of not being water baptized. And so... You pretend to trust Christ, but you don't trust Christ. You actually trust in your water baptism. which would, And you trust in yourself and some random guy that water baptizes you. Um, you know, if you're trusting in turning from your sins to be saved, you're not trusting in Jesus Christ who paid for all your sins. If you're trusting in... Anything that's not Jesus, it's not Jesus. If you if you try to add anything to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you know, and you didn't accomplish the death, burial, and resurrection. He did. He by himself purged our sins. Okay, and you know, please consider that. Don't you know think. That you can outdo what God did for you.